Okay, everybody, uh, we're going to go through the uh, steps required here to uh, set out uh, various types of arches you're going to come across on site. Um, for this exercise, I'll be using an 8x4 sheet basically as an example that we'll be setting out all these various arch types as mentioned here on the screen. Uh, so um, we'll just start with going into the what is the simplest one. So here's our 8x4 sheet, and we've decided we need to set out a semicircular archway. So um, We'll draw the span of that arch, uh, which is the width of the arch, which is shown in yellow here. Now when you do that, you need to find the center then of that line that we've just drawn there. And from that line, then we'll be putting what's called a rise line. And in this particular type of semicircular archway, that rise line will be the same length as the half span of this archway shown in yellow. And um, when we do that, then we'll, we'll basically, uh, if we can get something similar to a 2 by one lash, hook your tape on the end of the lash and um, measure in half the span, put a mark on it, drill a hole through it for a screw to go through and then as you'll soon see animated here, uh, you'll see that screw then driven into that junction there between the white and yellow line and then you put your, hold your pencil to the end of the lash then and just simply draw your arc all the way around and that's the simplest arch you'll uh, probably ever have to set out, you know. So that's the semicircular one, the easiest one to set out. Um, after that, the uh, next type is a segmental arch, which is less than half a circle. So um, its rise, its rise will be less than half the span. So basically, draw a diagonal from the top of that rise line for this particular type of archway, and as shown here in white. And do the same on the other side and you'll see a red dot there that shows you that that's the midpoint of that white line and here I just use a piece of plywood that I knew had a, a 90 degree corner on it depending on the scale of the arch you're setting out sometimes you might need something fairly large that you know is 90 degrees so that's what I've just done here and then uh, from the other side you'll do the same thing uh, and where they both meet at the bottom there uh, that junction right there um, again We'll be bringing in uh, this lash we used earlier for the pr first example of an archway. Uh, and this lash sometimes is referred to as a trammel. And you can see there we're shooting the arch right around. And we're, sh we're gone through the red dots there between those three junctions. So that tells us we've done it correctly. You know, we've hit this junction, we've hit this junction, and we're now just after hitting this junction. So we're known, we, 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 we know it's done correctly when we can see that. So, um, that is basically your segmental uh, archway drawn uh, to the correct rise. And um, they are just drawn in the two lines there just to show there is an opening. That, that's, that's the walled opening, those vertical lines I just animated there. Um, just to give you an example of where you might need to use this type of um, uh, archway, you might be required to do it maybe for a stonemason on site. Uh, you know, the stonemason has an archway. Um, you know, he, he, he or she will need something to follow um, that curve, and um, but they need radiating lines coming out that's currently shown in yellow there, maybe to get the size of his keystone first, and to you know you'll see the sides of that keystone are tapered uh, in line with the center of the um, the circle, uh, uh, which is also center of the the trammel, and of course a stonemason will use that trammel then to uh, line up all the other stones it just keeps swinging it around so um, you can just see here uh, basically what I've done here by the way is the this is a cord line drawn here in green um, we found the midpoint of that cord line uh, <clears throat> in other words cord line is where a line goes from one part of the curve to the other part of the curve basically and you just in our case here we just divide it in two find the midpoint and from the center then of our letter or center of the circle as it were we we, we shoot um, a line through that midpoint to cut the curve on the other side so and then we repeat that process but of course they're each getting each card line now is getting smaller as you'll see animated here but we'll be able to divide out um, our 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 um, archway support as it were uh, uh, to even segments so you can see that here animated right now so that's a repeat procedure, just to a smaller scale there now. And, um, yeah. And 
course, those, yeah, an extension of those radiating lines in. And of course, these other lines, the distance here to here then is already got from here up to here. So I suppose you yeah, as well to measure from the one line if you ever doing this for as long as possible. So once you get this line, just measure the distance from here to here and just go the same distance then from here to here. Uh, you know, and you can also go from here then to here and measure from this point to this point and you should be at the same point and you should end up with all equal segments then as you go around the um, archway so um, here I'm just showing the stones dropping into place so you can see the radiating joint lines between the stones are, are aiming towards the centre of that um, archway which is the centre of the lat that we put the screw on through the screw on the lat as it were so I'll just to give you an example basically of one area where you might need to use that here we have a, a segmental uh, archway but we do not know the radius of it but we need to know the radius because we need to make something that may be fitting into it like maybe a door frame or a door or whatever and sometimes it's a small scale item sometimes it's a very large scale item so this is just one approach especially if it's a large scale uh, basically if you get a straight edge um, of any sort maybe a long kicker board that you know is dead straight and um, just bring it to the arch and make contact with either ends of that um, straight edge and uh, when it makes contact you draw, you'll have a midpoint that red line there is is the midpoint of that straight edge it's halfway along the straight edge in other words and you'll be measuring square off that then to hit the curve whatever and and take note of that distance and that's what's happened here just animated there with the, yeah with the black arrow so yeah square off this midpoint so we'll be taking We'll be uh, bringing that straight edge with the distance and with the mark on it, and we'll be using that now on our set now sheet. Uh, next will be our next um, uh, our next step here in this process. So here's our set now sheet, and we're coming down that same distance that we measured off the set now sheet, and we're going to keep the actual straight edge. We're going to leave that on top of our set now sheet, and we'll keep that parallel. Then using that distance off the edge of the sheet and then we just use the steel squares animated here draw a line to go out to the edge of the sheet and then from the top of that black line down to the corners of the um, straight edge that I, I used we'll draw those lines and once we've done that we don't need the straight edge anymore all we need to get now is the midpoint of those diagonal lines though and again use your steel square draw from the midpoint on both lines inter interact as animated here and um, I measured out the half span for the opening as well here so you can draw on the actual opening that we're doing this on so again we have a lash coming in here screw driven through the lash and the end of the lash was in line with that red dot there and uh, we're now making the making the uh, segmental arch curve to match that one uh, that we measured earlier on with straight edge so that's just one approach and uh, just an example of a situation you could be faced with. So the next part of this uh, video concentrates on Gothic arches. Uh, base, three basic types, so that's what we'll cover here. The first one is called an equilateral. The equilateral is uh, the easiest one to draw. Basically you have your span line there already, so that's your opening that you need to have the archway maybe for instance. And um, again, we'll just use a trammel or a 2 by one lattice uh, if you like if you want to call it that and uh, again the screw is as you can see there at that junction where that springing line and by the way springing line basically means where the vertical line of the reveal stops and then the curve starts so that's what the springing lines is that's where the curve springs from so here we go as animated here then you just draw your equilateral uh, arch so that's your equilateral gothic that's your that's your most uh, easiest gothic to draw and um, from the other side do the same thing and uh, you can see here yeah now where the two curves intersect of course then that's the top of your gothic arch and uh, yeah the interesting point here is by the way you know those three lines are the same length by the way just in this particular case here uh, so you've you also have the same these angles are the same that's that's 60 degrees that's 60 degrees and that's 60 degree, 60 degrees so they add up to 180 of course so it's a quick way of getting a, it's another way of getting a 60 degree line isn't it you know um, just a matter just said I'd point that out there just while we're doing it um, 
So here you might need uh, you might need to facilitate maybe a stonemason again. So again, the radiate lines could be required, and again you draw a chord line that I drew there in white, and uh, get the midpoint of that, and from the point where we took the curve from, shoot a line as animated there just now, and uh, again like we did in the previous example, just sharpen, uh, reduce the chord line then from there, and keep having each uh, consecutive chord line, and uh, those radiate lines that you might need maybe for a stonemason. Uh, or glazing bars or whatever that you might be in a joinery shop who knows and um, here's your stone coming in and uh, that's just it's just an example of where you might need to use this um, type of um, arch um, so yeah there's all your cut stones now coming into place and uh, yeah here's the other half then of course and uh, We'll just complete out this example here just to give you um, an idea and um, you'll soon see also i've come in here i'm just giving an example of this also the same sheet then might be used for setting up maybe a door or a door frame and um you know so it might be just the it might just facilitate maybe the stone mason inside or whatever uh the joiner might want to here's the lines animated here that's the style of a door that's going in here we'll say that's the inside line of the style door style so that's another example of you know where you might need to use this type of arch so uh, so here's your door coming in of course so the next type of gothic arch is called a drop gothic arch and basically that means that the the rise will be lower than what would be in a standard um uh, a standard um, equilateral um, arch so um, you can see yeah uh, the the red dot uh, is where it would have been if it was an equilateral one right there but we've dropped the rise now to here so basically draw the diagonal line as we've shown there in white find your midpoint bring in your large steel roof and square if it's big enough to draw the line and uh, do the same on the opposite side and uh, you see I just transfer that distance then you don't need to go to uh, too much trouble then to draw the other half because it's it is symmetrical from the rise line so whatever distance you are from here to here then it's uh, obviously the same distance from here to here and I just use that red line there just to illustrate that I just animated there so you just have to pass it over there so you just draw your line to there and uh, again we're using a uh, trammel uh, and you can see the trammel is fixed was screwed to this point here and uh, that that draws uh, one half of our uh, drop gothic arch and then for the other half the same procedure mirror image uh, across the rise line and uh, there's the other half of our drop gothic uh, drawn uh, the next type of gothic arch is called a lancet a lancet gothic yes a lancet would have it's the opposite to a drop it has a higher than what uh, rise than what you would find on your as uh, on your equilateral uh, gothic and um, so that just uh, that's basically um, what you're looking at there so you have a higher rise than normal shown in blue here and um, again draw your diagonal line find the midpoint and uh, draw a line with your steel square uh, if the steel square is big enough or a, 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 a an off cut or piece of plywood if you have to if you need something bigger and uh, you saw this red line animation here i'm basically just transferring whatever distance i have from here to here i just it'll be symmetrical so it's going to be the same over here so it's mirroring across the rise line so i just animate that little red distance there across just to illustrate that point so um that speeds up the process thing because i don't have to go through the same procedure for doing the other to find this line over here as i did for the first one over here so that's that's no point so again we use our trammel our trammel then is out at this junction where this this white line comes down and the spring and line inter intersect that's where you fix um the screw uh, through your trammel and then um, you draw your curve so that's one half of your um, lancet gothic drawn um, then of course um, the reverse then is the next one again out the end your center point is here and there's your curve drawn and uh, that's that's your gothic arch drawn 
And of course, I'm just making the point here that instead of a pencil, you could actually attach a router to that trammel. And a uh, router, uh, uh, rather than just marking it, you're, you're marking and cutting it at the same time as it were, uh, if you want to run the router around, uh, provided you're used to you and trained in the use of a router, of course. So, uh, yeah. So there you are. So, um, yes, the um, next example we're going to hear now is called uh, a, a, an elliptical arch. Um, so, an elliptical arch is, you know, it has a wide span, uh, you know, that's from here to here. Now, anyone that might remember if they did tech drawn or whatever, or mechanical drawn, you might have heard the term major axis. Well, that would be the major axis of an ellipse. And from here up to here, there will be half the minor axis of that ellipse so it's um, you it's 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 just we're using different terminology here but it's the same thing basically uh, and, a, and a different approach um, uh, basically an ellipse i suppose if you look at a circle square on and uh, tilt the circle backwards the the the, the, the circle starts to look like a, an ellipse rather than just a, a proper circle but anyways, we'll continue on with this. So that is half. That's the rise of our arch, which, in other words, is half a minor axis. If you um, if you've done some mechanical drawing or technical drawing, you'll be familiar with that term. But for our purpose here, we're going to call it a rise. So draw again. Draw draw a diagonal line again from the end of the span line to the top of the rise line. And do the same on the opposite side, as indicated in white here. And uh, then take that um, half span or half major axis, as it were, and swing it up onto the vertical. And the difference in the uh, distance between the uh, the rise and the half span is from here to here. And I need to have that distance going back along down along this diagonal here, which I'm going to animate now anyway. So, uh, and the remainder then is what's going to be actually halved when we find a center point on here. So I'll just quickly go animate, go through the animation here. So you can see it on black there, what I was really after. And the remaining white line left in is what we find the midpoint of. And again, bring in your steel square, your large steel roof and square. Draw, draw a line down as such down towards the bottom of the edge. Do the same on the opposite side. And uh, where they intersect down at the end, and this point here are the center of curves. So this is also known as a tree centered um, elliptical arch, as well as known as a false, uh, false one. So um, uh, next in the animation, you should see the larger one being drawn here now. So that's the second radius, the larger radius. And it stops at this line, by the way. That's where it changes from being a the large radius to being the smaller radius that 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 line divides the two the two radiuses so there you go there's the third one drawn so there's your false ellipse or tree centered ellipse as it's also known as um and i i i've I compared it here to actually a two ellipse you'll see that coming up now shortly here just to show you so you can compare that there's very little difference this is just showing the uh, segments of the circle that you used and uh, there's the two blue ones and there's the larger small the larger green one so just, and here is a comparison just to show you the difference between the actual uh, this uh, this this is this is an actual this is a proper ellipse shown in shaded in blue and this is the one we the tree centered or false ellipse was drawn green as you can see there isn't a whole pile of difference they're pretty close and uh, the tree the tree centered or false ellipse is the easiest one to draw uh, in my view so I have one more example here then where we use actually a trammel to also draw uh, that same ellipse with the same span and same rise and uh, that's coming up here now shortly so here we are setting out a true semi ellipse so here we're using a trammel and if you look carefully we're co keeping the end of the trammel here in line with the end of the span line right there we're going to be marking this point here in the center yeah of that span or half the major axis in other words and uh, i'll just play on the animation here now you see that being marked there and uh, then we'll swing our trammel around and again we're lining the end of the trammel up with the top of the uh, the half the axis 
and uh, or the rise in other words in our case here and we're going to mark it here so in both cases we held the end of the trammel to the end either the rise line or the end of the span line if you remember so just we'll continue on here so that's it being marked right here right, the span line now now we've extended the rise line downwards so in white just happened there now so and uh, that will be needed and you can see here we're we're going to hold both points then that we marked earlier on this point and this point now are aligning with the extended rise line downwards and the span line if you notice so keep those two points aligned that point and that point this point and put a dot here then and you'll keep moving the trammel around then as uh, and repeat that process whilst holding those two um alignment points uh, in line with the major and minor axis as it were And here now we're lined up here again and here again before we draw the before we place the dot and you continue on like that and of course the longer flatter part of the curve would need less dots whether the tighter curve i find would need more dots you know because it's a very tight uh smaller radius but the larger longer curve as we call it it needs the dot you can space out the dots in that case because that's easier to, to, to draw uh, and of course what happens in this case you end up drawing a freehand uh, you know so which is okay depending on what you're making or what, what you're setting out you know um, so that's the completed one there um, so um, yeah next we're, we're going to use an approach where we set up what I call a, a, a groove track uh, you and combine it with the trammel we just made so you'll see that here and that's th that's shown in pink here now uh, there it is in pink. That's actually a groove um, grooved into this sh plywood that we're going to use as a template. And uh, we're going to have two pins through this trammel here that will travel, that, that protrude down underneath this trammel and into that groove. So the movement of the trammel then is controlled by the, the, the track and the pins going into the track. And you can see that you can see how that's working here as we uh, move forward. So I'll just play it along here and you can see what I'm talking about uh, in an animated form format. So, so there we are. We're setting it up. And you can see there. And if you see there, it's still moving along the track. Both pins are moving along the track. And that pin can't have any play you know it has to be snug to the width of the track and um, so now sometimes there are little blocks that will slide along the track with a screw into it but uh, this will give you the basic idea of how it works and you can see it here if you notice the two pins they're, they're sliding on the track so as this one is sliding in towards the center this has to, has to go downwards as the curve has been drawn so this is using a trammel to uh, draw your to actually draw your uh, using a tra uh, combined with a, a grooved track in the center of the ellipse uh, that will also draw it quite accurately uh, and that continues on then down to the end and of course once you have half an ellipse you know, that's all we need really here if, of course if it was a table we need a complete ellipse but of course again once you have this half and if you're making a template you just need half and just reverse it and to draw the other half then rather than going the whole procedure all the way around if you liked so um and again you could use a router on the end of that instead of my hand that's thrown there so uh, well that's basically it folks hopefully that gives you an insight into what's involved with the various types of arches that you might have to deal with on site 